There are a lot of misunderstandings with people who don't understand the, the process of natural selection and how it actually works. And most of them are based on failing to see what it is natural selection actually works on. And they look then at, for example, the fact that natural selection, as the end result of natural selection, people who we deem to be successful have less offspring, for example, or that even success does not generate something like happiness, which we would expect from a successful person. We would expect a successful person to be happy. Uh, for example, Anne Kantavad made a video uh, calling Darwin to explain himself and saying how, how come that the Japanese, who are so much more successful, seem to be a lot less happy than the Filipinos, who from our perspective would be the least successful of the two. The problem is, with a case like that, that we are projecting our ideas of what constitutes success and we expect natural selection to conform to those ideas. Obviously it will do no such thing. With regards to natural selection there is only one possible yardstick for what constitutes success. And it's very simple. It is, can your genes make more copies of themselves than the next guy's genes? That's the only measure for success. If you are able to do so in genetic terms, from the perspective of natural selection, you are a success. Now, of course, the converse argument for that, also leveled very often by those who would question the whole idea of natural selection, is how come we have evolved ca capacities, capabilities, that appear to have no real evolutionary benefit. For example, what I saw asked there today on the video was somebody saying, how come we have capacities such as the capacity to create mathematics, to think logically and so on and so forth? That appears to have no evolutionary benefit. Where would be the survival benefit of being able to calculate an integral, for example, or to be able to work, calculate Boolean logic. Well, let me illustrate that that line of reasoning is actually quite wrong. And the way to illustrate that is best done by giving you an example of what is actually going on here. Now, in order to understand the example, I want you to visualize four cards. Now, the cards have numbers on one side and are colored on the other side. And the rule that I'm going to put to you is this. If a card has an even number on the front, then the color on the back will be red. Now, you are given these four cards. And my question is, in order to make sure that this rule has been followed with these four cards, which four cards would you need to turn over? I'll give you a moment to think about that. Or pause the video if you want. Now, if you've worked it out, and it's not that hard to work out, but I would imagine that, especially if you haven't seen this problem before, you might have to stop and think for a bit. Now I want you to look at the following situation. Four people enter a bar and there is a rule in place. Under 21s are not allowed alcohol. Now you look at the four people and you observe the following. The first one is holding a coke. The second one is holding a whiskey. The third one is drinking something. You have no idea what they're drinking, but they're holding an identity card which identifies the fact that they're 21. The fourth one, again, you have no idea what they're drinking, 
but they're holding an identity card that tells you that they're 18. What do you need to do? What do you need to check in order to establish that the rule that under 21s are not allowed to drink has been followed? I bet you that you found that second question much easier to deal with. Funnily enough, it's the exact same logical problem. Underlying the question is the exact same logical problem. The difference is that the second one was termed in fr in, phrased in terms of a social contract. There was a rule and some people would cheat and somehow we find that very easy to figure out. Whereas when we are just looking at the whole problem in a very abstract sense, in a logical sense, by removing all that social context and showing you just a bare bones logical problem, you suddenly had to think a lot harder to figure out what the correct solution was. And this is what's going on. You see, what is at play here is something that has evolved. For some reason, in our recent past, it was opportune for members of our ancestor species to live together. We have become a very gregarious species. We live in bands, we live in towns, we live in families, we live in groups. That's what we do. And it has become very important for us to be able to figure out who's not playing ball in our little group. Which one of the people around me is not being up front, is not playing according to the rules. To put it very crassly, to be able to spot the cheaters around you was what ensured that you got your leg over, so to speak. And that of course then was of evolutionary benefit because that mean, meant that you got to spread your genes. One of the reasons that might be behind this is that we have become, as human beings, a lot more monogamous than our immediate relations, like the chimpanzees, for example. We are still not very monogamous, and even though we have a tendency to couple up with somebody of the other sex and live a monogamous, monogamous life with them, we are always on the lookout, especially, of course, the men around us, but also the women. The women, while so on the one hand looking for a steady, dependable husband, might be looking for the stud occasionally in order to get the better genes in. All of this has helped evolve us into something of a bit of a paranoid species, a species that is constantly on the lookout for people who are trying to pull a fast one. And that makes it so much easier for us to look at the second scenario that I painted there and to come up with the correct answer of what needs to be done. Whereas in the first one, where the whole social context is out of the question, it becomes an abstract problem and we actually have to work much harder. So our ability to solve logical problems to do maths, so to speak, is not an innate ability. It's not something that evolved in us for no good reason. It is a byproduct of this ability to spot cheaters. It drove the enormous expansion of our brain power, was trying to be able to spot the cheaters. But now that we have all this brain power, it can be used for other purposes as well. But it is harder, because it is not the natural thing to do with our brains. The natural thing to do with our brains is still to spot cheaters. But with that cap capability, we are now able to solve logical problems, to think mathematically, to think scientifically. None of that has actually evolved into us as a species even though maybe, especially in the latter few centuries, but of course that's less than a blink of an eye in evolutionary terms, and it can have had no real effect on us as a species yet. But nowadays, I can see how being able to 
get your head around such complexities as scientific questions would actually be of a of an evolutionary benefit now, but not in our recent past as a species. And that is why we find the abstract version of that question still much harder than the social version of the exact same question. But it also proves that the whole concept that that ability, that logical ability, evolved into us, it was somehow selected for by natural selection, is completely wrong. It was a fortuitous side effect of our evolution. It was something that was an added benefit to what the original capacity evolved for, so to speak. But it was not something that was selected for in the first place. And to make that mistake is quite insidious really. A lot of people make the mistake and don't even realize that they're making such mistakes thinking that evolution should make us happier, that it should try and evolve us to be more socially successful or more financially successful or be a better pop singer or, one, or better looking or anything like that. Evolution couldn't care less. Natural selection couldn't care less. Like I said right at the beginning of this video, the only thing that natural selection selects for is how well can you spread your genes. And that's all. Anything over and beyond that is either a bonus or very unfortunate. If you are miserable, but you have lots of kids in the eyes of natural selection, you are a success story whether that makes you happy or not. If you are able to spot the cheats and make sure that your wife doesn't cheat or that your sperm gets in there or you get the right husband with the right genes or you can actually cheat your husband so you get the nice genes from the stud next door while your husband takes care of you then your genes are going to make it into the next generation. That, with all that added brain power, we are now able to create technology and science is merely an added benefit about which natural selection itself couldn't care less.